All right, welcome to Love Them Knives channel, LTK here. We have a batch of knives, just want to report on these. Um, and I, I did a report before on some of these knives. And um, the, the Rockwell numbers looked somewhat high on some of them. And so I had them double checked. And so I'm going to redo this. I took that video out. And I'm redoing it now with more conservative Rockwell numbers. So was the machine a bit off or was there something with the previous uh, Rockwell numbers I got from the other tester? Possibly, although I've seen, uh, you know, test blocks and the, and the dial and it looked like it was properly calibrated. So I don't know why I've got a differential in the Rockwell numbers, but I'm going to re-report this with the lower numbers to be more conservative. And this lower set of numbers uh, also was double checked on another machine that agreed with these. So these have been not only done, but rechecked. So I'm going to go with this set of numbers as opposed to the higher set of numbers. Sometimes the Rockwell numbers on these knives was like maybe a point higher or a point and a half higher than ha ha what we have come up with now. And sometimes they were two or three points higher like on this one in M390. So we have a whole new set of numbers and I'll, I'll show you the PMI results and the Rockwell results and we'll get this done. If you don't want to sit through all my blithering, there you go. Take a screenshot. Yes or no, PMI, okay? And what's the Rockwell? Number one, we're going to talk about the Bear Ops. These two, I mean, one of them I, I bought, okay? Because it was just so inexpensive and I thought S30V. Okay, been through this before. I know we've talked about it. No, it didn't check out as S30V. I've got a number one and a number two here. Didn't check out his S30V. I contacted Bear Ops. They responded. They were surprised. Uh, they say they get their steel directly from the manufacturer of the uh, C CPM S30V. So, uh, I don't know. But it was looked like more like 8CR13. Definitely not a super steel. Okay? So... Then I bought the second knife, had that tested, got back with Bear Ops. Yeah, the second one didn't test either. Then I had a viewer sent me one of these in G10, black G10. I tested that. It looked like HCR13 as well. I've sent that back to him since, okay? But here's the uh, information on the actual analyzer on the elements, okay? So you got 14% chromium, that's fine. But look at the vanadium. The vanadium ought to be 3.5%, 3.5 or higher here. This is not, so this actual group of numbers, it looks like 8CR13. This person that did this uh, reading, it does have a degree in metallurgy. So I'm good with that, yes. Next. The Best Tech Camosa was on that sheet, and that was a loner, and I just didn't have enough time to be able to keep it and report on it. So there's what the Best Tech Camosa looks like. So the Best Tech Camosa is M390, and yes, we had it checked. And it is 59.7, so 59.7. Now, if you did a second test on it, because you can be 0.5 up or down. That's your, that's your deviation that you can have on a Rockwell machine. So could it really end up being, you know, instead of a 59.7, a 60.2? Yes, it's possible. So our range is a 60 to a 62 on M390. So 59.7, is that really in the green zone? I'm going to call it in the green zone because if he'd have stabbed it one or two more times, he might have found a 60 or a 60.2 on there. So when it's that close, we just say, okay, we're good. If it was just a flat 59, no, it'd be in the yellow zone, okay? 
but this is close enough to 60. We're going to call it good. The next one was the Bobcat. I, I don't believe, no, we didn't do a PMI on it. We've done PMIs on Best Tech M390, on their S35, on their D2, and all that. It's all been true to form as far as the elementals. So we were just interested in the Rockwell number, and the Rockwell number was 58.2. 58.2. So 58 is kind of the minimum I want my D2 at but it'll definitely be in the green zone. No, it's not a 60, a 61, a 62, which I've seen some at 60, you know, 61, uh, even up to 63, but this is a 58. So uh, it's adequate for what I would prefer personally, and it's definitely in the green zone, so it's good to go. Next one up is our Harns Blazer. So we actually do have that in the studio because the Bobcat was also a pass around knife and it had to go. So here's the Harns Blazer. Interesting knife and it's 9CR18MOV. You know, what's the point even? Well, because 9CR18MOV, if it's, if it's heat treated correctly, it's a damn good user steel. I'd have it as well as, I mean, maybe even preferred over OS8, some of those. So yes, it's a good user steel and this is just a Beast. This is a big, huge beast of a knife. And so let's, let's check it out. And he goes, the chromium's too low. Um, 9CR, 9CR18 should be a higher chromium level than this. So he's going, it's too low for that. He thought it looked more like a Sandvik steel more like 14C28N. So interesting. Um, and I think if, if they actually advertise it as Sandvik Steel, probably more people would buy it uh, than not. So I don't know. That's confusing, isn't it? It's interesting, but it looks more like a Sandvik Steel. Next is our little Harns Wind knife, and it's a 14C28N. And it's been poked and prodded, and it's really nice, lightweight little gent carry. It really is. Uh, the Harns knives have been really good. Uh, they've all tested correct, except for this one, which is a little odd that it looks more like Sandvik. Hmm, weird. But here's the here's the printout on this one, and yes, it is 14C28N, and that one was a 58.6 HRC Hogue, my automatic, and it's got a couple of stab marks on it, but if anything was made to be a, a really good prospect to be an automatic, it's the Hogue X5. It really is nice. Beautiful knife, Alishowitz design. They say it's 154 CM or CPM 154. You look at it, yes, it is CPM 154. And what is the uh, HRC or the Rockwell? It's a 58. So this is a 58 Rockwell. The next one is not here either. I had a large Don from ProTech, okay? And that is 154 CM not CPM 154. This is 154 CM. This looks just like the knife that I sent in for testing. And yes, it is 154 CM. The Rockwell number is a 59. So it was a 59 here. Then we got the Spyderco Para 2. Okay, this is in CPM 10V. Good looking knife, huh? I like it. Not so big on the brown scales, but wow, what kind of steel is that? It's super sharp. It really is. So is it really 10V? Well, how much vanadium's it got in? 10. 10V? Maybe that stands for vanadium. So that's, that's really cool. Of course, look at the chromium. Is that a stainless? Oh, no. Not even close. Not even close. Okay, but yes, yes, it's really 10V steel. Not like you need to check, but it's kind of interesting just to see the elements in here. 
and baby that got stabbed four different times that's amazing and yes it's a 63.3 rockwell so hey that's pretty stout isn't it 63.3 i like that knife that's a keeper for sure now we're going to finish up with a couple of tucson knives the tucson kingfisher Mazwan Mokhtar, and that is M390 steel. And is it really M390 steel? Well, look at the vanadium 4.47%. Look at the chromium 20%. Oh, yeah, that's M390 all day long. What's the Rockwell on it? Well, the Rockwell, I think we reported last time, is like a 63 point something, but no, it's a 60.2. 60.2. So it's right there between 60 and 62. Yes, it is. It's 60.2. Well done, son. Well done. And yeah, I like it. It's just a great knife. Got nice inlay on both sides. And of course, I'm finger flicking it because I'm not the best at uh, front flipping. But it is a front flipper knife as well, by the way, as well as being able to flick it with your fingers and then the last one is my wolf fish which you know is a wong design and i never get names when i buy a wong knife there's never a name with it but then i'll message him through instagram and then he'll come up with a name i don't know if he's just inventing one because i ask him uh, about the name or if he had a name and they never published it so this is the wolf fish but this is in s90v they made this in sandvik as well as a Tucson model, the TS-127, okay? But this is S90V, right? Well, let's see. And there you go. Look at the vanadium. Ouch, that's really good. Um, yes, it's real S90V. Man, that's solid. And it's a 58.2. Could it be a little harder? Maybe. But it's it's still in the zone, so it's 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 good. It's solid. This one's definitely solid. The the two sun knives I've checked, they're all true to the blade steel that they advertise. And you know what? That's it. That's the whole pile of knives. I uh, hope this is interesting to you. Probably maybe not all the models that you are looking for necessarily, uh, but I do have a batch thirty one and a batch thirty two. Uh, a lot of them are back now, PMI-wise, but I don't have Rockwell numbers on them. So I'll be reporting on that on a later date. But there's some interesting ones in those batches. So I think you'll really like uh, what we have come up with. And we like doing this testing. I really do. I really want to uh, give my appreciation to the guys who are doing the PMI testing, the analyzer uh, testing, determining the actual composition of the steel and to those doing the Rockwell numbers as well. It all comes together to really make some good information for viewers that really want information on knives that they're buying. Because, you know, this is real money and you want to get a, a solid product. And so it's fascinating from that aspect. And we do. We love them knives. So you guys stay sharp.